Okay, guys, today, today, I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite uh, dried cured meats, and that is dried cured pork belly, or as we like to call it, slanina. Uh, this, to me, is probably the best piece of dry cured smoked uh, pork that you could possibly have, and there's a big difference. So, this is not bacon. I want to be very clear. This is this is bacon, but this is not bacon in the traditional American sense. This gets dried. You lose 30, 35% of the weight. It hangs, it smokes, and then you slice it and, and chop it into little squares and eat it after it's cured. You don't cook it. And um, so some of the books that I've read, one of them in particular specifically speaks to drying and curing um, bacon and one of the recommendations is never to use number two instacure if you're going to cook the the meat the number two instacure apparently has a, a chemical reaction with the heat and it turns into a carcinogen that's what i read i can't confirm it um but in general I prefer only sea salt on this at a rate of 3% by weight. So you can see here, this weighs about 10.4 pounds. We're going to go ahead and open up all these uh, slabs, clean them up a little bit. We're going to weigh them and uh, we're going to go ahead and salt them up and put them in our plastic bins, which we are then going to leave out because my garage right now is about 34 degrees and the rest of the week it's going to be about 34 uh, degrees as a high so I know I can put sea salt on this without any instacure and let this sit for a week or two uh, in the cold and then I'll monitor the temperature for next week whether or not it's going to go into the fridge so uh, without any further ado, let's talk about the actual bacon. Uh, my favorite place to get the pork belly is Costco because number one, it comes skinless and it comes well-shaped. So you can see they've already trimmed this pork belly to a nice rectangular shape, which makes it much easier to cure. Other places we bought them from the butcher shops in downtown, we bought it from uh, Restaurant Depot, they'll come with the skin on, which isn't a bad thing. Some people actually prefer the skin on. I don't. I like it skin off. And then when I cut this it, after it's been cured, it, it makes for really nice clean cuts. Plus, every time we've bought it from Costco, they've been very, very meaty. And one thing about um, pork belly, you would assume it's pretty easy to cure because it's so thin. But the reality is these layers of fat are really tough to penetrate for the salt and the cure. So to get around that, what we do is we'll salt it with 3% and then we'll lay each belly one on top of the other in the bin. And then every day, and it's absolutely imperative that every day the order gets reversed. So the top one goes to the bottom and then it gets flipped as well. And we'll do that every single day for a week because after the week, that salt should have been able to penetrate this layer of fat all the way through as long as you're properly flipping it. And after a week, we could then take it out and we'll string it up. And there's a couple different ways to do it. These are super convenient. You can pick them up online, bacon racks. I think I paid like seven to 10 bucks for these. They're great, not just for bacon, but you could use them for sausage and for anything else really. Uh, but you'll just simply penetrate through and it hangs in your smoker and uh, it makes for a very easy um, hanging process. Number two, of course, is always string and then the sticks that we use in the smoker to, uh, to hang the meat from. That's an easy way to do it as well. Uh, so, We'll do both ways, but right now I'm going to go ahead and open these up. I'm going to get them weighed and then we're going to go from there. Okay, so step one, we're going to weigh our clean container, which we just sanitized, food grade container. This is where the uh, pork bellies are going to go in. I want to go ahead and weigh this and get a weight on it. 
And that is 1.6 pounds. So I'm gonna write down 1.6. And I'm just gonna write container so I know that's what I'm subtracting. And then we're gonna go ahead and start opening the pork bellies. And uh, these we picked up today, They're, they look great. They're really, really nice. Um, I will say during this time of COVID, the prices on pork has just gone through the roof. Couldn't believe how much uh, these were. And again, because these are from Costco, there's just not a lot to trim on these. They're pretty much exactly how you want them. There we go. All right. Thank you, sir. So I will look for any spots where there may be some blood left on here or some veins. This one looks pretty good. It does have a little bit of silver skin here, which we can probably trim out. And that looks pretty good. That's pretty much all we need to do to this belly. And now it's gonna go into the bin and we're gonna finish the rest of them and we're gonna get this weighed to see what the uh, total weight is. Okay, guys, so we trimmed out all the pork belly and I'm gonna weigh it now. I'm gonna put it on ounces because it's easier. Uh, yeah, bam, Easier to convert the 3% uh, salt in ounces. So we're gonna go mode, ounces, okay. But before we do that, we're gonna try a little, just a little travaritza. Ah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, All right, here we go. Ooh. My. Okay, actually, you know what? Let's do this. We're gonna go mode, kilo, pounds. So it's 42.7 pounds minus 1.6 pounds, which gives us 41.1. .1. Now 41.1 .1 times 16, that gives us 657. 0.6 times 0 0.03 or 3%. And that gives us 19.75 or 72 ounces. We're going to round that up to 20 ounces of salt for this batch. So 20 ounces for four pork bellies. And what I'm gonna do is I'll separate the salt and I'll start salting each one of these equally. And then any salt I have left, I'll just make sure that we coat everything. So that's our next step. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start salting the slabs real quick. I'm gonna go meat side down first, then fat side up. And then I'm gonna put the fat side down so when the meat starts to sweat, the juices are gonna go down and start penetrating into the fat side. Then tomorrow I'm gonna to come drain all the juices and flip the slabs. And I've split the salt up into two approximately equal um, containers. So I know I'm gonna use about half per slab and just rub it in, make sure you get it into all the nooks and the crannies. And be generous on the fat side. And then pat it down nice and firm. And we go with the second slab.
Okay, and that is almost it. Now we're gonna cover this and I'm gonna leave this on my table in my garage. And then tomorrow I'm gonna take this out, put it in a clean container and flip and redress the uh, existing bellies. And I'll show you that next. Okay guys, today we are gonna be rearranging the uh, pork bellies or the bacon or slanina, whatever you wanna call it. So this is about 24, 48 hours after salting. I wanna show you guys a little pool has formed here in the meat. You can see there's a pretty good amount of water in here. We're gonna go ahead and dump that. And I'm just gonna use my sanitized lid to put the meat on. I'm gonna put it in the same order that I'm pulling it out here. And that's number three and number four. So you can see after the salting, the pork bellies have uh, let off quite a bit of water here. There we go, number four. You can see that's quite a bit of water. I'd say probably a good 10, 12 ounces of water. Um, and now we have marked the weight 41.1 pounds on the uh, container. So I know what my original starting weight was. I'll weigh it again before it goes into the smoker and then I'll weigh it um, over the next couple weeks, months until I get to that 35%, 40% weight loss. The only problem is by doing it this way, I got to weigh all four of them, which isn't the end of the world. It just takes a little bit more time. Okay, guys, so I'm going to go dump this real quick, wipe it out, and then rearrange the bellies. So I dumped it, I wiped it, and now what I want to do is take this belly, which was the top, and kind of flip it so the bottom one is all the way down. So we're going to do that. Not probably the smartest way, but we're going to get it done. This was the bottom. And this was number two. So now we're going to go meat side down. Meat side down. Uh, this was number one which makes this guy next and there we go okay so that is it now um i want to talk to you guys a little bit about two things number one there's a method of salting whole muscle meat which is the uh two application it's really no different than applying all the salt at once I, I really like the two salt application method. What I don't like about it is uh, it takes a little bit more time. So if I put one and a half percent percent salt down the first day, that water bleeds out, I dump it off, I apply another one and a half percent of salt, the water bleeds off, I toss it out, and then I keep flipping them as the week goes on. Uh, it, it's a good method. It takes a little bit more time and unfortunately that's one thing I do not have so um, I'm gonna do it all at once if you guys have the time do the two application method I think it's a better system you can see here also before when I put this meat in the first time I could barely get the lid closed I had to stack some more meat on top of it and this is now probably a good half inch below the below the surface so we're gonna go ahead and let this uh, continue to equalize, continue to get that salt to the middle. It's been pretty cold in my garage, ranging between 32, 34 degrees. So it's gonna take a little bit longer for that salt to get through each one of those layers of fat. So with the bacon, I think I might just keep an eye on this for about two weeks. It's been a couple days now. Uh, weekend's coming up here pretty soon. I'm going to keep flipping it every day, every other day at this point, just to keep the, the meat moving around. 
but I'm thinking this is going to be a two week process for equalization uh, with this bacon. There we go. <clears throat> but uh, we'll see. I'll keep an eye on it. The next step is we're going to string it up onto some bacon racks and uh, we'll put it in the smoker with some apple wood and maybe a pinch of cherry. Apple wood and bacon just go together really, really nicely. So that's the next step and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, guys. Hey, guys. So it has been a couple weeks now, two weeks as a matter of fact, and I have turned the bacon a few times in the uh, in the container that it was in and I feel like uh, you can really feel this is much much uh, stiffer thinner than it was um, so now what we need to do is string up the bacon and we're going to go ahead and put it into the smoker and start smoking it you can see there's some spots here where the meat uh, isn't quite as pretty as this it's not quite as red and that's okay that's that's not there's nothing wrong with this it's just the meat got a little bit oxidized because it's been sitting out in the open and it hasn't been drying um, so it's going to get a little bit of discoloration uh, like a browning graying of the meat not the end of the world and when you smoke it if you use cherry wood in particular it's going to be nice and brown and golden on both sides and uh, you won't even see it so not an issue so now what we need to do is we're going to pick a couple spots here we're going to run a couple strings so we can put it on a on a stick and uh, uh, we could put it into the smoker and hang it properly so again we want about 12 inches of string we're going to tie it into a quick knot we're going to use a bamboo skewer to push the string through the meat and then we're just going to tie it off somewhat evenly so it's not um, too uneven because if it's too uneven then it's gonna it's gonna lay a little crooked in the in the uh, on the stick and this just popped through which happens sometimes all right here we go got a new skewer you fucking <laughs> This thing wants to play games, I'll play games. You know, I might get angry and just pull a knife out and cut through it. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Usually this goes through the first time. Here, you know what? Maybe it's the rope. Let's try another end. All right, there we go. Nice, tight little knot. Put that right there. <clears throat> okay. All right. Perfect. So we're going to do this on the other side as well. You want to make sure to leave enough room to get a, a smoking stick in there. So you want to pull that knot up. So now we have a nice loop to what we can work with for the... Uh, for the smoker okay guys so instead of doing it the old-fashioned way where you get pissed off and it's not working right spend nine dollars ten dollars buy a bunch of these bacon racks they're about a million times more convenient uh, real easy this is the skin side you're gonna flip it you're gonna find a nice spot on the bacon you're gonna push it through and you're done. I mean, not even comparable. So there you go. Hey guys, I just want to show you this real quick. <laughs> so notice on the fire, I've got plenty of red embers underneath. I burnt a lot of smaller wood. I've got two medium sized pieces of wood burning there and then one large one on top, which I, I put a couple cracks through just to make sure that it's gonna start burning. This is going to provide me a good amount of smoke for the uh, bacon to get started. You can see here, I've got the bacon hanging in the, uh, in the smoker. There's two of them back there, one on the side. I'm going to fill this area here with some ribs so I'm not wasting uh, 
a good smoke on nothing. And we're gonna let this go three times. We're gonna use apple wood and maybe a little bit of cherry for some color. And we're gonna do this three times, which will give me about a 24 hours worth of uh, smoke time. And then we'll go ahead and hang it and let it start drying. Okay guys, I just wanna show you here the bacon has now been smoked three times. It is absolutely ready to go. You can see it's got a nice brown, golden brown color to it. So this is now gonna go into the cure room and we are gonna let this sit for probably three, maybe four weeks. The bacon's gonna take a little longer because there's quite a bit of fat on it. So it's gonna take some time to, uh, to drop that weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these to the uh, cure room and then we'll go for it. Okay guys, so we are here in the cure room. I've chambered this off a little bit so I can keep the humidity a little bit higher over here. And if I could back up a little bit, here they are. The four beautiful slabs of bacon, gorgeous color on them. Smoke flavor is overwhelming. This entire room smells like uh, applewood smoke. Uh, these are some ribs we just took off the smoker. These are the bacons. We are gonna leave these in here for two, maybe three weeks. They're pretty firm right now. It was really, really cold last night. I think it was down to 20 degrees, so I had to get these in ASAP. Um, but they're gonna cure in here now for, I would say three, possibly four weeks. I'm gonna keep an eye on them, make sure. They take a little bit longer um, only because there is so much fat on the, uh, on the belly. Uh, but these should be good to go in about four weeks. We want to lose 35, 40% of the weight. Humidity in here is really low because I just set the, um, the little humidifier and turned it on. I just pulled some pork loins out and, uh, these are going in. So I'm going to adjust that real quick. I want my humidity to be around 80% for about two weeks, and then I'm gonna slowly start dropping it 75, 70%, and by then we should be in the full dry mode. You can see the temperature consistency in here has been fantastic. It's 54 degrees in here right now. So the low is 54, the high is 55. Very, very consistent. My humidity, like I said, the humidistat's been off the uh, humidifier. So it's been as low as 38 and the high of 47. We want that around 80 for the next two weeks. So we're gonna constantly be filling this bottle. Your space may require more humidity or less, but I know I have to fill mine every two to three days. So, so that's it for now. Now they cure and essentially dry. And once we hit that ideal weight, this will be better than prosciutto, I promise you. This is number one, Slanina is number one uh, in my book better than any other charcuterie you could possibly make so we will see okay guys so we are gonna bag up the slanina today uh, it's now thoroughly dried actually over dried um, but it's still in pretty good shape we're gonna take it all out today and vacuum seal it Okay guys, so we are finished making the slanina and it has cured and it has dried and it is firm and delicious, beautiful. Um, I do want to point out, I have made some slanina with some different salt and the meat was not as pretty and pink as this. I used some... Uh, Italian sea salt. On this one, we used sea salt from Croatia, and I think it made a difference. I think it made the meat a little bit more pink inside, uh, probably because it carried more natural nitrates in it. So anyhow, once you're done with it, at this point, you want to cut it into serving size pieces. Uh, these are obviously pretty big, but uh, this way, if I want to dry it a little bit more or a little bit hang it a little bit longer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum seal these. And here, sorry for the shadow, is the vacuum sealer in action. And 
that's it. This is now preserved, vacuum sealed, ready to be either consumed now or you can leave this out in the open, I'd say for at least uh, two, three months. Uh, preferably in your fridge, it'll last indefinitely. Uh, this could last easily a year or two in the fridge as long as you don't break the vacuum seal or if you put it in the freezer, at least two years uh, in the freezer. Sitting out on the shelf like this, uh, it could get a little bit of mold on the inside here depending on how warm it is and how much water is left in the, uh, in the meat. So just keep an eye on it if you're gonna leave it out. Uh, but it should, if you keep an eye on it and you don't see any mold, you're good to go. So, and if you do, just wipe it off and eat it, it's fine. All right, guys, there you go. Home cured, Slendy Knot.